just a very short video, one minute, to, as an introduction, so I don't have to speak for very long. Then we have the floodgates theory and said, well, if we give them back, 
then everyone else will ask them back. So we in Ataki have the so what theory, the floodgates. So the British Museum will lose all its foreign items. So what? Let them show the domestic items. There is no domestic item. There is no reason for these museums in our position to exist if they're holding items without the permission of the people who created them. Of course they can buy things. Of course they should show things. But primarily, a uh, museum that was a national museum, British museum, Greek museum, should be a national museum displaying primarily their own products. Otherwise, change it. The French, being the French, very sophisticated, they have the Louvre, and that's nice. They have items, they have French items, a lot of foreign items. They call it the Louvre, not the French Museum. Mm. Anyway, so this is our position on the British Museum. We talk to the British government, we pressure them. Now, Alan and um, Eric, who are here, and the others on our committee, we grew up in Africa and we know the British mentality very well. There is a conflict here. We're looking, uh, and it's a, a great uh, honor for me to have. English people on our committee, even though one is now uh, New Zealand, another Australian, and I uh, move, we move to different parts of the world. There is a conflict here, obviously. We want something that someone else is not going to give back. The first thing you do in any game play, or in a game in a war, whatever, whatever level you play it on, war is violence, games are uh, according to rules, discussions, informal discussion between friends, and is to know your opponent. You must understand the mentality of the opponent. Historically, it's a fact, undisputed. Britain has never, had never given anything back because of discussion. Only under pressure. We saw it in the colonies, in, in countries like Cyprus, uh, Burma, Kenya, and other countries, it was with blood, it was a revolution. We're not, we're not on that side. We are on the side of what Gandhi did in India. Non-violence, pressure that people can understand and sympathize with. We're not terrorists, we're, we're civilized people. Gandhi was a civilized person, the supreme civilized person, who knew the British system, he respected Britain, as we respect Britain, that Britain has given a lot to the world. But the British Museum needs, with the government, needs pressure. So without pressure, we believe nothing will be done. Now, what is the situation? What is this British Museum? The, the, what, what is happening to the British Museum? The British Museum is not an independent museum. It's totally funded by the Ministry of Culture and Sports. The board of directors is all appointed, one by the Queen, most of them by the Prime Minister, a few are elected by the people who have already been appointed. Their funding all comes. They have no gate receipts. They sell a few books and some sandwiches. That doesn't keep them going. It all comes from the British taxpayer, which means the Ministry of Economy, or Ministry of Finance, I don't know what they call it in Britain, but it's a taxpayer's money that supports that, that institution. It is in no way independent. The board of directors have a very serious reason to keep it going because without the passing of the marbles, they will have no influence. That is their raison d'etre. This is what makes them important. We've heard earlier from earlier air, um, speakers, respected speakers, that our ministers from Greece went and talked to them. But they didn't go and talk to the British government, who are the ones who can bring them back. They, they were very politely went to the museum. I won't say what happened museum, when our people went with the best intentions, how they were treated. What I will say is it also a little bit of a Scottish story. The Scotsman stole them. A Scotsman is in power in Britain today. I'm not giving it back. And a Scotsman is in charge. I don't know if there's some Scottish accents which we haven't looked at. Perhaps we should look at that. Maybe it's not an English story. Anyway, so that is now. This is, uh, what is a Parthenon issue? It is uh, a historical throwback to an era when people were very different, different morally with different times. Because I'll explain what I mean by historical throwback. The British Museum is like an eccentric art for the British government. She's there, we give her some money to keep her living in a house, drinking tea, having friends, saying whatever she wants, as long as she doesn't bother us. And we're not going to do anything because we'll let her play out her life. She's at the end of her cycle. We're not going to do anything to upset her. So she's the eccentric art of the Victorian era. Because what happened? When the Parthenon sculptures were taken, at that very same time, the, 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 the parliament that Mr. McGregor refers to, and he talks about a parliament, he says it's an act of parliament gave these, it's illegal items. That same parliament, an early session of it, were the ones who sent British Navy ships to protect the slave vessels 
which left our native Africa with three million people in abominable position, uh, conditions, selling human beings, all legal, with bills of sale, everything. This is what the British were doing, and it was normal, it was accepted, that you can sell human beings. And the British Navy, with the Queen Victoria's insignia, was protecting those slave vessels. In China, Britain said, we don't have any silver enough to buy all these goods from China. You will buy, we are going to use as currency, opium. We will pay you in opium. And the Chinese Empress wrote a letter, it's on record, it exists. We don't want opium, it's ruining our youth, it's breaking our, uh, our society apart. Exactly what's happening today with drugs. And she said, we don't want the opium. And the British said, either you accept this, because they were growing the opium in India, they hadn't got enough silver to buy Chinese. Chinese said no, and there were two wars, and even called the Opium Wars, when Hong Kong was lost and opium was forced on. The third act, the third part of this time, this historical time when the Parthenon sculptures were taken, and it was acceptable to loot other countries. It wasn't looting them, then it was acquisitions. Uh, it was normal acquisitions of an empire, perfectly normal at that time. Not what Elgin did in the way he did, but the concept which he fitted in, which he, he looted and he destroyed it, but he fitted it into the acquisition, bringing things back. The third thing was the, was the acquisition of items overseas. That has stopped. The laws have been passed by slavery because somebody, like our organization, Wilbur Wilberforce, one man in England stood up against a slave trade, against enormous interests. He was a square peg in a round hole. That's what we are, and we hope we all are, a square peg in a round hole. We will not accept what has happened to Greece. We will not accept what the British government is doing. We're going to make it difficult for them. And at least in the psyche, we're going to break eggs. We're going to be polite, but we're not going to let them get away with it, because this is a continuing crime. It's the biggest cultural issue in the world today, and it has been for a long time. And it's too important to allow other people, that's why we all should be involved, and we are involved. The fact that we're here from all over the world and from here is very um, encouraging. So that is our position at Ipsaki. We fight for them, we want the Marble Act, and the most important thing, and I close with this because I know time is very valuable, and you, I appreciate that after lunch you're here, and that is very important. Uh, I don't like to speak before lunch because everyone's looking at their watches or going like this. <laughs> but anyway. So uh, the, the final thing is, and this is what we, have we been successful? The fact is no. Have we done anything really over 10, 20, 30, 40 years with all our combined efforts? Yes or no? The answer is no. The British government have hardened the position. Recently, Cameron said to the Indians, I won't give you back the cocky nor a diamond because you know we have to give the Parthenon scarves back. I'm not giving them back. So they've hardened their position. We're where we were 10, 20, 50 years ago on the basic issue of the return. I'm not saying other things, there have been advances. So where are we? So we propose a complete shift. It is something I thought about. These are not statues. This is a temple. This is the Holy Rock. This is, these are, what is in the British Museum are not statues. These are, there's a river god there, which they refer to as statue. There's a river god. These items that were prayed to, sacred items. It's a temple, a temple of Athena, of an ancient religion in a country that still exists. We're not, though they have said, we don't pray to the 12 gods, but we respect our, uh, the people that Plato, Socrates, and the others worshipped. And these are religious items. And I will come to this in, in conclusion and close with it. The religious I, the religious aspect argument has never been used until today. It is the only one, we feel, but the only one that cannot be met by discussions, legal legalities, because there is no museum anywhere in the world that can keep an item, which is a religious item, a sacred item, of another culture, of another uh, religion, of another country, in its, and display them as secular, just it's in the museum. Nowhere in the world will you see uh, a religious item taken and put on when the other country that it was created asked for it back. So we're asking for the Parthenon sculptures, these sacred items, which were sacred to the ancient Greeks, to return to the temple of Athena, which is the Parthenon, which is not on a rock, uh, just a rock in Athens, which is on the Acropolis, which is the holy rock. Even today, Greeks say heroes for apples. Will that I conclude? Thank you for your time and patience in listening to me if I took the time.